In this video, I am very excited because I am putting a Holden Ute through its paces. Proper Australian motoring. Oh, I think this is going to be fun. So this is a 2004 Holden Ute. Um, that's how it was badged. It's based on the VT Commodore, which is a slightly earlier version of the VY I drove in New Zealand. Uh, that had a big V8 engine in it. This has the Buick V6 engine, which was um, Holden's smaller engine option. I'm not entirely sure why they didn't go for the European six-cylinder engines, maybe because, um, or even the V6 engines, maybe because they tended to be a bit smaller. Um, but we'll have a look at the engine in a minute. But just taking the shape of it, um, unlike the Fords of this era, the Holdens are a monocoque structure. So very clearly based on the estate or wagon, if you want to be pedantic. Um, and it's got the same rear lights, very much the same sort of shape going on. So that was clearly the starting point for the ute. Big bore exhaust, only it isn't because it's hiding inside. This one has done 357,000 kilometres and I'm testing it in front of a Holden something or other. Um, that's the Isuzu based off-roader, Isuzu D-Max elsewhere. I've temporarily forgotten what it's called, but it's not in bad shape, I don't think, for 357,000 kilometres. You can still pick up hints of um, the Vauxhall Omega starting point for this range of um, Commodore, but it's wider than an Omega. It is um, longer than an Omega. So you can't go creating an Omega Ute very easily, unfortunately, more's the pity. Um, we'll start by having a peek under the engine bay, I think, or into the engine bay. And uh, we shall pull the thing that says pull. Oh, that sounds like it was gonna come off in my hand. That's amazing. Uh, presumably there will be a catch under here, the mighty fine Holden badge. Of course, soon to be a redundant badge. Uh, while I've been in Australia, it has been announced that Holden is to die, uh, which is very sad. Uh, these struts seem a little untrustworthy, but nonetheless the engine is up. So here we go, 3.8 litre V6 overhead valve. This is not cutting edge technology, but then the V8s are also overhead valve, so... Um, Perhaps it really doesn't matter too much. Um, coil packs here for the um, six cylinders. We've got air conditioning, power steering, as you'd expect. So a nice serpentine belt going absolutely everywhere, all over the place. That is quite a length of belt. Um, it's a very smooth engine. Um, I'll certainly give it that. And um, a fairly uncluttered engine bay. Looks nice and easy to work on, which is kind of what you want. It's got vehicle emission control information. This vehicle is fitted with a computer engine management system. This was not cutting edge for 2004. But nonetheless, there you go, that's the um, engine bay. Um, if we come around, we'll have more of a look inside this fine vehicle. Uh, it's a base model. They were called the base. Uh, I quite like the way the dash vents are integrated in the door. I like that, but we're on keep fit windows, but we have electric mirrors and um, uh, a computer thing that tells us information if we put the ignition on and I've lost the key so that's really really good uh, it's all very plasticky in here um, I can kind of see a bit of um, GM Europe influence in the um, column stalks but they're not a straight lift of course we've got indicators right and it looks like the cruise control switch is much easier to operate with your fingertip than the VY so that's one of those improvements that wasn't an improvement um, you can set an overspeed warning so it tells you if you're going too fast and uh, that's what it's got on the trip at the moment distance to empty 520 kilometers don't know how big the tank is or what the economy is so yeah the overspeed is set to 110 kilometers an hour at the moment so it'll warn me if i go too fast we have got air conditioning because even a base model here in um, uh, australia really really needs it and we've got stereo and um, we've got some music oh smashing pumpkin siamese dream you winner and also blue sky mining by midnight oil midnight oil being a fine australian band and uh, there's some storage i'll just turn the ignition off there's no point having that on for the moment uh, there is some storage behind the seat uh, which is a good place to put some tiny shoes if you feel the need there is a cloth here should you feel the need to wipe the rear window which is right here but it is heated you know that's posh um, nice little quarter light 
windows here so you can kind of see what's going on. Let's see, we've got a bit of a saggy headliner. Nice big interior light. But yes, yeah, it's, it's very spacious in here, very comfortable. We've got four speed transmission, the GM 460LE, um, I think it is. Um, 480 being a, a more common unit that um, popular in the beefier Jaguars and things like that. But um, yeah, four speed transmission. Um, we've got um, some extra USB outlets here. Probably shouldn't have stuck my finger in there. It looks like it's actually quite live at the moment. But nonetheless, I appear not to be dead. That could be very, very useful. I've also got my um, Samsung Galaxy in a little um, heat event mount there, which is quite handy for two reasons. Because if you use a windscreen mount, um, A, the mounts tend to die in the sun, and B, your phone tends to die in the sun. So having it ventilated, all the good. Uh, this is the mode selector for your little display there. Hazard warning lights. Don't seem to work. I'm going to put the ignition on, see if that makes them work. Yeah, there we go. Hazard lights that only work with the ignition. That's peculiar. But you can see the um, the uh, warnings up there. So that's all the good times. Um, got wipers, which um, naturally we should test while we've got the ignition on. I'm going to shut the door just in case we get a bit um, of a wash inside. Oh, there we go. Oh dear. It's got the same problem the VY does, unsurprisingly. Tiny triangle of doom here. So um, it's not too bad today because it's quite warm and I think the water's evaporating immediately, but that is our triangle of doom there. That's not good. Uh, we've got light switch down here. You can adjust your panel brightness. Now, apparently you've only got two settings on that and that's turning your lights on and off. Um, you can't pull the knob for the interior light. It's got fog lights. Uh, that must be front fog lights. Oh, I hadn't seen any, but nonetheless, it seems to have a switch. Uh, there's power mode down here to go faster. A handbrake which looks remarkably similar to the one in a Ford Falcon. I wonder if there's one company that specializes in um, handbrakes. Uh, we've got this delicious bit of goo down here. That's nice. A cup holder. Um, does that come out as well? Maybe it isn't meant to come out. But yeah, I mean, it's a bit nasty plasticky in here. But um, otherwise, I think this compares quite favourably to the Fords. And uh, having said that, I'm probably now going to get murdered. Um, I don't know what this is. Teconsha. Set power output. I don't know what that is or what it relates to. Um, no trailer connection. Aha, there we go. Um, so it's something to do with towing. I imagine some sort of monitoring system, maybe. Uh, right, that's enough looking in here. Well, we'll have a quick look in the glove box. Oh, we've got the original books and everything. That's quite a spacious glove box. So yeah, it's not bad. The, the seats are comfortable. Um, head restraint is not exactly set for me. Will it go up? Oh yeah, it will go up. There we go. That's a bit better. And um, rearward visibility is quite good in a straight line, but trying to tell where the back end of this pickup is, is not easy. There's not much to um, judge the distance by. But um, I'm waffling on. Let's continue our tour because it's got a tray back on it, which um, lock and unlock. Andrew's handily given me um, some clues there, but I've got to say the um, key doesn't seem to want to move. Maybe it's not that key. Maybe it's this key. It is this key. There we go. Use the right key. It does help. Uh, unlock. Now we should be able to lift that, maybe. Oh, there we go. And now we can see the um, load bed. And I presume there's some sort of a release in here. There is. So you can drop the tailgate down. How useful is that looking? A uh, practical wagon. Uh, it's not very good for carrying people, but um, nonetheless, there's quite a bit of space in there. And uh, yeah, this sort of cover at least keeps it um, useful because you can obviously lock stuff in, albeit the locks aren't the most um, uh, convincing. But uh, that's, that's what the ute is all about. Uh, the ute of today. I've used that joke before. Um, yeah, it's, it's got space. I like the fact it's got a strap so you can strap stuff in. Because um, I have a feeling that might be going for a ride if I get too carried away. Um, but um, yeah, all good stuff. Feeling proper Aussie now. 
Now all I need to do is fill the back of it with um, Castlemaine Forex and we'll be well away. Other beers are available. All right, I'll lock this again for security. There we go. Perhaps not the most practical of um, easy access or anything like that, but there we go. And uh, we'll get you strapped up and go for a drive. And I can strap you up right above my shoulder because we've got a rear window. Perfect. All right, here we go. I'll get these sat nav fired up again so I know where I'm actually going. This won't be the biggest of test drives uh, because I'm just going to go back to my Airbnb. There we go. Fired into life, into drive. I haven't got the handbrake on because I never do in automatics. The one thing that strikes me straight away is it's um, a level of refinement you're simply not used to in a pickup truck because we haven't got a rattly great diesel engine. Uh, we haven't got a huge cabin for the space to rattle around in. Um, so. Uh, Oh, she's a rorty little thing, isn't she? Wow. Yeah, uh, that's a level of performance you don't get in the Chrysler Neon I've just jumped out of. But um, once you ease off again, it's all very, very quiet. Um, I'm going to put the air con on because it's getting a bit stuffy in here. But yeah, I mean, unsurprisingly, it feels quite car-like. Um, I don't think, because it's based on the estate, uh, we haven't got the simple live axle rear, I don't think. I'm not really sure what the rear suspension is. I'm quite new to this, but I haven't done any homework because um, I thought I'd just jump in the car and drive it, first of all. Um, what does kickdown feel like? yeah reasonably brisk and this is the baby engine of the range this is the the entry level model a, a mere 3.8 if you wanted more um, get up and go you obviously went for a v8 although to be honest i think people buy the v8s mostly just because they want v8 noises no leaf springs here it is indeed a sort of semi-trailing arm rear suspension with coil springs so that adds a level of refinement over the Ford, because I think the Fords remained um, leaf sprung, even the estates, um, well into the 2000s. Possibly all of them, actually. Oh, that really was some rain. Look at this fine lineup of Australian vehicles there. Being interrupted by Yaris Saloon. Falcon GLI Long Reach. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I drove this car in the rain earlier. It's not the best for traction. Well, here we are a few days on, and I've covered probably about 800 kilometers in um, this Holden Ute and uh, it's been quite the experience. Now, there are some things I must point out. It's had the front bumper replaced and the fit is not quite perfect but that's fine. Uh, the dashboard also does this. Which gets really annoying when it does that when you're driving down the motorway and it's kind of creaking at 100 kilometers an hour. Very irritating. I uh, will say on a rainy day, the Triangle of Doom disappears entirely. We actually get overlap uh, as a um, Ford Falcon X taxi drives past. Very distinctive colour scheme. Um, but otherwise, it, it, it's really quite pleasant. Um, the engine sounds properly nasty when extended, uh, which I'll do a demonstration of in a bit. Um, but um, that's probably because it has some very interesting heritage. Let's pop the bonnet and have a look. Yeah, what I hadn't realised when we first had a look um, in this engine bay is that it's a 90 degree V. Uh, 90 degree V, very good for uh, a V8 engine, 
and that's because this is a cut down V8 engine. It is a V8 engine with a couple of cylinders lopped off. And in fact, it's actually closely related to the Buick all aluminium engine. It's, this has got an iron block, but um, the history goes back all the way to the engine that ended up in Rovers. And uh, so that's quite um, in, an interesting bit of history, but that explains why the engine is quite rough at higher revs. Um, 90 degree V6s do tend to sound a bit gruff. Uh, Citroen SM is a very good example. They're also a cut down V8. And uh, it's just that, that angle, it just creates um, vibration. Where a 60 degree, the more common V6 angle would not. So there you go, there's an aside for you. But other than the rough engine, I really like it. It's very easy and effortless to drive. The gearbox and engine work well to keep the revs really, really low, which is good given how rough it sounds. I love the styling. I mean, um, it makes you realize but that maybe they should have done a pickup version of the, um, uh, the Vauxhall Omega, because I just think it looks great. It's a really nice shape. Uh, for the sake of balance, I will point out that I actually think the Falcon Utes, which actually have a chassis cab construction, but you can get them with a, 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 a factory bed, if you like. Oh, nice little plane up there. Uh, I think they also look nice. But yeah, I, I've really enjoyed my time with this car. So many thanks to Andrew for um, loaning me this vehicle. Um, I'm pretty sure it will be the last vehicle I drive in Australia. Um, maybe forever, hopefully not. But uh, yeah, very enjoyable experience. I hope you've enjoyed my little um, long-term test of that car as well. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. Right, I'll try and do a demonstration of engine roughness. Oh, that is, yeah, that is not good. That is why I generally don't drive like that in this car. Um, I've discovered if you want to hoon about, I mean, it's a much better idea to hoon about in um, a Holden with a V8.